Hello everybody. Today we <laughs> we drill. Got air blowing in my face. Hello everybody, Julian from Julian Tech TM here. Today I have a mini ITX PC here. It's running a Ryzen 5 3500 with a RTX 2060. Founders Edition, look at that, Founders Edition. So what I'll be doing with this PC, I want to add a handle. That's how I'm gonna drill. And I'm also gonna upgrade the GPU, which will lead us to the sponsor for today, Zotac and NVIDIA. Thank you so much, Zotac and NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. We did a 3090 build, we did a 3080 build, we even did a 3070 build. Now we're gonna go 3060. I. I have the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 Zotac Gaming Twin Edge in my hands. Yeah. We're gonna add this card in. Then after that, we're gonna test a DLSS, some ray trace games, and use a reflex. But I don't think we're gonna use reflex. But maybe I'll do, maybe I won't. The goal here is I want a portable PC. And I also still want like the uh, good PC that can run freaking Cyberpunk. Bro, why are you so hard to run? The 2060 is really struggling, you know, bro. You can see the camera setup is a little bit different. My face will be cut off a bit because I want you to concentrate on the PC instead of my face. So I know my face is very handsome, but don't need to see that today, okay? So you know what? We're gonna just drill holes in the middle here as a black handle with a black case. I'm not quite sure what case is this exactly because I actually traded one of my PC for this PC. So I never really do any research about this case in particular. But what I like is that, you know, there's, there's a, a gap here. I, I want to add this handle because I, it's very weird to, you know, hold it here. And then you'll be like walking like, like that all the time, you know? Whereas if you get a handle, you can just carry it. Boom! 3000 series PC anywhere you want. I'm gonna put a piece of paper here. I'll tape it down. Then after that, I will measure. Try to measure as accurately as possible. Outline this. And then, yeah, we can install it. So I'm gonna use some tape to tape this down. Later. It's a very loud. Oh no, this is not good. I'm gonna pause this video for a while. So I think what happened is, if you look at this, the drill bit itself is not straight. So it's been curling. This is actually the middle point. Kind of moved to the left. This also moved to the left. Thankfully, it's still, it's still in the right position where I can still install this. It might not be perfectly centered already though. 7.9. Yeah, it's definitely off centered. I think it's still salvageable. Make a new hole here and get a better drill bit tomorrow. Because it's already late and I can't, I can't really buy it. So I got the new drill bit and it was so easy to drill. Now all I had to do is just drill new holes in the case and add the handle and screw it in. It's as easy as that. Then I use a ruler to measure to make sure it's centered and it's really centered. Hmm, <laughs> satisfaction. While editing this video, I have some emergency news. I just got the Zotac RTX 3060. One problem, you can see the card here. It takes two PCIe. This PSU actually can't even take the 2060. It's a 450 watt power supply and it only has one PCIe cable, which is not good. It's one of the small ones. I don't know whether you've seen a small one. This is actually my first time seeing a small PSU. I, I'm gonna go to somewhere to get the parts. Let's go! I'm here for the power supply and cooler. Look at that, low profile. Hopefully it fits. And after shot, I have kitty cats. Straight off. Yes. Hi, look, kitty cats. Hello? Hello? I think spoil. Hello? Hello? I think they spoil. I went ahead and installed the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 Ti Zotac Gaming Twin Edge. It's a mouthful. Because I really just wanted to do the benchmark, I also added the CPU cooler and I also added washers and nuts for the handle. So I actually benchmarked the RTX 3060 Ti and 3060 and it looks like the RTX 3060 is a little bit below a RTX 2070 Super in terms of benchmark. But I'm gonna go through the proper benchmark later on. What I wanna do is put in the RTX 3060. I just want to enjoy it and see how it actually runs in real world games. So let's do it. Okay, Cyberpunk 2077. Max out 1080p without DLSS. It does around 30 FPS, but I would imagine if I start to shoot, it will go lower. Yep. 
is real slow. With an NVIDIA card, you want to turn on DLSS. So let's just turn it to auto. So Ray Trace Ultra DLSS at normal does 45 up to 50 FPS. That's 20 FPS for free. Just wah, 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 wah. You, you, you. Woo. Okay, a lot better, a lot better. Now I'm going to turn off Ray Tracing to see how it performs. All right, there we go. That's what we want to see, 60 FPS. If you look at the monitor, the GPU is only using 65%. So it actually can do more. And interestingly, the CPU is using close to 100%. It's like 90, a, a high 90. So the CPU is actually bottlenecking the GPU. Huh. So even though the CPU usage is high, I wonder if I increase the resolution, will it still bottleneck the GPU? Or will the GPU run at 100%? I don't know, let's try. We're going for medium settings, DLSS on auto and then we're gonna up the resolution to 1440p okay 1440p apply oh look at that the fps legit stay the same it's at 70 fps i wonder i wonder can we run 4k run it at 4k let's do this yeah this is where the gpu actually goes up to 100 percent usage so the conclusion is if your cpu is bottlenecking the gpu then just raise the resolution then you can utilize the gpu fully Oh, I didn't know that. So it's damn weird, right? At 1080p, it runs 70 FPS. And then at 4K, it runs 60 FPS. 65 FPS. 4K. 4K. What? Yeah, it's smooth. It's smooth. It's running 4K. A 500 Singapore dollars card. Supposed to be $500 lah. It's running 4K. I mean, it's running on medium lah. Without ray tracing lah. But still. <gasps> Why if I turn on ray tracing? Okay, no lah, no lah, cannot. The frame rate is 35 FPS. You can't do 4K ray tracing with the RTX 3060. That is if you want 60 FPS or more lah. I think the best setting, if you want to play 4K, medium setting, DLSS to auto. But if you want ray trace on then 1080p with DLSS, then you then you can turn on ray tracing. Lah. I keep changing DLSS and ray tracing settings. And if you don't know what DLSS or ray tracing is, it's NVIDIA's graphic card technology. So ray tracing affects shadows and light. Lighting. And before ray tracing, we were using rasterization. So what rasterization is, basically an object will have its own shadow. It's not actually a light source that, that makes the light or the shadow. Whereas ray tracing is very much like Pixar's movie where they use actual lighting and have the light bounce off different objects and create very accurate shadows and lighting. For a game like Cyberpunk where the rasterization is really well done, it's very hard to see the difference, especially when a game is moving so fast. But if you put a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see the difference. And if you play a game like Minecraft, that's where you can see a major difference. Because Minecraft didn't really use rasterization to its fullest. And what DLSS is, is Deep Learning Super Sampling. Basically, you're rendering at a lower resolution and upscaling it to a higher resolution. So for example, 4K, right? It could be rendering at 1080p and then upscaling it. But you know, if you have a picture, right? small small one then you make make big big then you can see the image not very clear right the picture like blur blur right so what dlss actually does it uses ai to fill up the pixels that are missing and the first instance of dlss wasn't the best but now with dlss 2.0 it's really really good if you have dlss no matter whether is it the 3000 series or the 2000 series you must turn it on you must it's just free fps FPS. But yeah, I think with that, let's go on to the benchmarks. I actually benchmarked some games like CSGO and Cyberpunk and many more, but the CPU bottleneck did limit the GPU usage to 60 to 70 percent. So the results from that won't really showcase the true power of the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060, especially a Zotac Gaming Amp version but interestingly when i play games at 4k that's where i can actually use 100 percent of the gpu so if you're thinking of getting an nvidia 3000 series gpu then you better have a proper cpu to back it up for gpu performance i do have accurate synthetic benchmark results and the rtx 3060 place it just below the rtx 2070 super Yes, the super. And if you can actually find the RTX 3060 at its 499 price, it's so good. It's value for money. So if you have a GeForce GTX 1060 or anything lower and you're looking for an upgrade, you found it. You'll be able to play games at 4K at medium settings 
at an affordable price. So if you have any questions about the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060, do comment in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer all of them because I know I didn't really go in depth with the specification of this card. But other than that, I'm super, super happy with my build. It's like I customize it at my own handle. So it's like one of a kind. It's really quiet and overall, it's still a beast of a PC in a mini ITX casing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, certainly enjoyed doing this even though it took so long because the drill got problem. Then suddenly PSU need to change. Then the CPU cooler also changed. Uh, well, it was fun. It was actually fun. Like got a handle. Look at that, look at that, look at it. Other than that, we're done. Or oh, I'm done. Bye-bye.